Joining me now to talk about what he saw at camp is Jeff Duncan of the Times Picayune and NOLA.com. And Jeff, let's get started with kind of a general question here. It is only June. Coach Payton's pointed that out. But take the temperature of this team right now. One of the keys indeed has to be the fact that Payton's out there. Well, I, I tell you, Fred, anyone that was out there last year when Sean Payton wasn't around, there was a noticeable lack of intensity and energy. And you can feel that back immediately with Sean Payton's presence on the sidelines, out on the field. Uh, they needed that. I, I think more than anything else, uh, you know, people talked about the defense, how, how much it was let down la last year. I really think more than anything else, it was just strictly intensity and they weren't playing with a sense of urgency. That edge that Sean Payton gives them is back and that's very noticeable from, uh, from watching minicamp. Yeah, it's good to see him back and good to see that energy. You're absolutely yeah. right about that. Um, competition at various positions. I thought we'd talk about left tackle. Charles Brown, if you can keep this guy on the field, he seems like he might be the the early leader in the clubhouse. Yeah, I think that's who they want to win the job, but mm -hmm. they can't rely on him right now. He's already had another injury. He's gone through this throughout his career, and it's such a critical position right now. Uh, I think that they're scrambling a little bit at that position. Uh, they've got a, a couple other candidates. Obviously, Jason Smith's a veteran player. They came in. Uh, he'd washed out at a couple places, was a very high draft pick. Uh, that's their stopgap. Mm -hmm. uh, Teron Armst Armstead is going to be the heir apparent there. He's going to be the left tackle of the future coming in very raw, Fred. I don't think that they feel comfortable putting him in there right now at left tackle. Mm -hmm. uh, it's such a critical position. He comes from you know such a small school, Arkansas Pine Bluff. Uh, that would be asking a lot for him, yeah. I think, at this juncture. So they want Charles Brown to win that job, and he's got to prove it. This is a huge opportunity, and I think a make or break year for him. Also a lot of com uh, competition, Jeff, at the wide receiver spot for number three on down. Has Joseph Morgan stated his case for being their new home run guy? Well, you know, last year he flashed big play potential, mm -hmm. and I don't think, even though he had some off-the-field problems here recently, he had that transgression with the DUI, I really believe that that might be a bump in the road for him. Now, he, he can't trip up again, but right. they clearly see the potential in him. One Saints coach told me that he is just like a Rob, young Robert Meacham. He has mm -hmm. that kind of big play ability. They need somebody to stretch the field because, let's face it, Marcus Colston and Lance Moore, as good as they are, they're big on intermediate and underneath routes. They don't have that deep speed. They need somebody in Sean Payton's offense to stretch the field. Joseph Morgan is that guy, uh, but he's got to get more consistent. He's another guy that hadn't played a whole lot of football. He's had some issues in the past, transferred, came from a smaller school. Uh, so they've got a number of players behind him. I think they've got really good depth there. I think that's, that's been a little bit of a pleasant surprise how many other players they have in addition to Morgan. You've got uh, to, uh, Nick Toon, mm -hmm. Kenny mm -hmm. Stills, this young kid, Salim Hakeem, real speedster, kind of a find out of the undrafted free agent ranks, Preston Parker. There's a number of candidates there. I, th I think they're going to be fine at that spot. Yeah, Andy Tanner. Andy Tanner, who just to every year, yeah. every year shows up and catches everything thrown to him. So I think they're going to be fine there. they, they got more than enough good hands out there. All right, now let's talk about the defense. Of course, that's going to continue to be the big focus. Mm -hmm. Rob Ryan, the new defensive coordinator, but are the guys at this point buying with that 3-4 defense and the new defensive coordinator is selling? Oh, I think they're all in. I think they're being mm -hmm. on anybody that wasn't Steve Spagnuolo. <laughs> yeah, that's nothing true. against Steve Spagnuolo. He, yeah. he was a great guy. I think we all dealt with him. Yes. A tremendous man, a great family man, but it just didn't work out for him last year here. For whatever reason, his scheme and the players didn't buy in, and there's a lot more excitement and enthusiasm from the players because they're going to go back to attacking the way they did under mm -hmm. Greg Williams. And you can see it out of practice. Uh, guys lined up all over, a lot of exotic looks. Uh, some of the stuff we saw, Saints fans might remember back when the Cleveland Browns came in here a few years ago into the Superdome and beat the Saints, and Rob Ryan was the defense coordinator, and they threw this kind of amoeba defense at them. We're seeing some of those schemes in practice, and I think it's a lot of fun for the players, and I think right now uh, they're all on board. Now we'll see what happens once the season starts, but right now I, I think everybody's uh, all in. And there's a lot of competition for, you know, some uh, playing time and positioning over there, especially at safety. Uh, Kenny Vaccaro, the rookie, uh, lots expected of him. How's he settling in so far? Well, they're using him all over the place, and that's mm -hmm. a good sign. That mm -hmm. shows that they want him involved in this defense early on. I don't know if they know yet what role he's going to play. I don't think he's going to start. I'll be surprised if he does start, but he's going to be on the field a lot, and that's really all that matters. In, in this day and age and, and the way they play football, uh, your, your sub packages, if you will, four and five, def uh, uh, five and six defensive backs often on the field together. So we're going to see Kenny Vaccaro. Right now, the thing that I like most about him is he's all over the place. He seems to have a nose for the football, mm -hmm. a guy that just has instincts. 
and that was something that we weren't sure of when he came out of Texas. Uh, but right now, I know uh, Sean, uh, Drew Brees, I'm sorry, mentioned just, just how active he is and, and what range he has on the back end. They, they've mm -hmm. really needed that the past few years. And, of course, all of this is going to help, I think, Malcolm Jenkins mm -hmm. and, uh, and Roman Harper out there kind of expand their role a little bit, right? Stretch yeah, their abilities? Th there's no question. Look, Malcolm Jenkins was a, a player that everybody was high on and really struggled last year. So did Roman Harper. I really believe the safeties in that Steve Spagnuolo scheme, it just didn't work out. They yeah. didn't buy into it. They were out of position a lot. And so you almost have to give them a mulligan. We're going to find out this year. There's going to be no more excuses for those guys in the back end. They've gone through now three defensive coordinators. Uh, it's time for them to step up. All right. Now, give me your most pleasant surprise that you've seen. I know it's early. It's only June. But as we head into another round of uh, OTAs this week, what would that surprise be? Well, I tell you, I've been very impressed with the backup quarterback spot. You know, mm -hmm. that was a question mark after Chase Daniel left. Seneca Wallace looks like a really quality pickup, a guy that I think is going to be an upgrade there over Chase Daniel. Luke McCown's played very well in practice. Mm -hmm. And the young kid from, from Tulane, Ryan Griffin, uh, I think he's a guy that's going to be a great developmental prospect for them. I think they're better at quarterback now and deeper than they've ever been. That's good news to hear. So things looking well with the Saints as they head into OTAs. He is Jeff Duncan, Times Picayune, NOLA.com. Thank you very much, as always, for coming by on a Sunday.